Yesterday, I had read this news of how Meta AI had helped the UP government save the life of a 22-year-old, all because of a simple distress video which he had posted on Instagram. So um, I don't know about other people. I understand that AI has its pros and cons, but this is uh, this kind of a use case makes me optimistic and hopeful for the future. So um, the UP government, uh, the UP police, and uh, Meta AI had collaborated in January this year. And so far, they have been able to save close to uh, 450 lives. So that is pretty interesting. Uh, you know, so let's get to the point. So uh, sir, I would like all of you to briefly introduce yourself and talk about one AI use case which has really left a mark on you. Uh, hi, uh, everyone. Thanks for coming and joining us. So basically, if you are talking, so I am Dev Saurabh. I am co-founder at We Founder Circle and Avinya Ventures. Um, so I am a techie, my, I have been a techie myself, so have been evaluating and seeing a lot of, uh, what do you say, startups uh, of lately. So I mean, choosing one would be difficult. Um, in fact, I have a couple of ideas in my mind running uh, on those aspects, but I, 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 I am working with a very um, good company. I am helping them in reaching out to right set of audience who are completely changing the way enterprise, enterprise because I am an enterprise guy, uh, who are looking at an, at an enterprise level who are solving the complete infra problem. So let us say, um, if you are uh, met life of the world, or if you are uh, menu life insurance of the world, you have tons of tons of tons of uh, requests coming on your uh, wake from different countries. Uh, so far, um, customers are telling you that this is their problem. Different uh, problems have been logged in from different uh, ways. And then you want to contextualize those things. Maybe one um, network will not work for you. Uh, on top of one uh, kind of LLM will not work for you. You want to train it on some other kind of LLM. You want to uh, rag it on your own uh, database. So he, this guy is building a platform which can be, which which will give you a normal screen where you can do all of this uh, with couple of clicks and uh, create your own uh, customized uh, version of um, AI and uh, help your business in uh, doing things. You can also build this to uh, integrate your workflow on top of it. And uh, you can also integrate it with uh, video level uh, stuff. Uh, you can transliterate what you want to say and get a robot say it or uh, many other things. So my point is the opportunity is uh, endless. I was meeting one gentleman here uh, one Mr. Tarun, if I'm not incorrect, and what he is doing is uh, helping marketeers in, and this is the recent one, uh, so helping marketeers in not only creating very quick uh, plans, but also helping them in tracking each of uh, the attributes. So, uh, Hi, this is uh, uh, Krishna. I'm the founder of Cropin Technology. Uh, just to give you a brief, uh, we are a uh, uh, deep tech company in food and agriculture. We provide uh, intelligence on uh, on the crops, uh, zooming into the plot or zooming across the country, how the outlook of the crop looks like. And this data is consumed by enterprises, government, development agencies, and also growers so that uh, they can secure the food. Right. So on the principle which we have built, the company is uh, we want to make every farm predictable and sustainable. That's what uh, using data and technology. Uh, we now provide this service in 103 countries. Uh, we manage around uh, 500 different crops, 10,000 varieties of those crops in the, uh, at the scale. We computed around a billion uh, acres of land for our customers and the growers, uh, which where they are consuming the intelligence to uh, make uh, farming better with the data. Uh, one other thing which excites me about AI is uh, how are you how are you taking this technology and uh, bridging the gap of digital divide, right? So, um, and I'll give you an example from uh, what we are doing. Uh, uh, with this AI technology, we are now able to, you know, create a, uh, a, a grid around the planet, a five by five kilometer, and at every five 
five by five kilometer or 10 by 10 meter or one by one kilometer, we are able to give you past, present, and the future of the crop, what it looks like. So if you are doing a corn or a potato on that grid, what could be the yield potential next season? What has been the trend in the last five years? Uh, what are the impact, what are the causal for yields dropping or yields are increasing or the crop acreages are increasing or decreasing, right? So doing the causal and also predicting the future, looking at the how the climate is changing and give you a next season, next year, next five years, 30 years of outlook to how the crop is going to behave in, in that scale. And this is very important for uh, to build a resilient food ecosystem across the country, so solving for the food security and sustainability. At the same time, you are also providing this information uh, in a manner and way and a language which a grower understands. So how does grower interface, if he's chosen to do a corn or a potato in Odisha on that grid, what is his actionable? Shall he grow potato? Because future outlook is not looking good, shall he change his crop? If it is growing, decide to grow a potato, is there is a you know, disease pressure getting built up in, let's say, in October, where there could be a late blight or in December. Uh, so can, he, can, he, can you give him a future outlook to make a decision and also improve his current crop uh, using this data? Uh, the other piece which is these LLMs and the AI is solving is the digital divide where uh, language is no more the barrier, right? So you can converse in your local language. So uh, you know, I can ask in any language to a model saying, if I'm going to grow a potato, what will be the yield next season? Shall I do potato or not? And it should be able to give you response in your language to you uh, or in the voice because you are not able to write or type. So, so digital divide and literacy can be really removed from this with this technology. And I'm very excited about this technology as well. And how do you take this to the bottom of the pyramid and uplift the whole economy for a country or for the globe? Yeah. Thank you. I'm Ram Prakash. I lead the AI research for Manage Engine the IT management division of Zoho Corp. Uh, I'm going to briefly put through two use cases that I think have had a bigger impact on my life using AI. One is AI has got a bigger impact in software development. We are moving from hand looms to power looms. And while this is a good thing, the bad thing is it has also gone into the hands of attackers. Malware and ransomware are spreading at an even more faster pace because they can just use one malware to create multiple um, stealth mode malware and ransomware. So uh, we've got a lot of cases where traditional antivirus was not able to flag a ransomware or a stealth malware, but with AI that was made possible. So the damage was not done and we were able to solve it uh, right at the beginning. And this is professionally. Personally, uh, I know parents with young kids would understand how difficult it is to come up with a bedtime story every night. So I have a six-year-old daughter, and uh, we use these large language models to generate bedtime stories. And uh, my daughter gives the character some Mr. Potato, Mrs. Carrot, whatever. I throw in a, a model, and then we also illustrate it. We're planning to publish that as a book sometime. So these are the two bigger use cases of AI in my personal and professional life. It's a very um, drastic two examples you said, sir. Uh, sir, uh, coming to Krishna, sir, uh, you know, you just talked about how your new um, uh, AI so solution, Sage, if I'm not wrong, right, uh, is helping pr uh, predict the future, uh, you know, potential of the crops. So what kind of data is critical and required for agri-tech startups, and how do you collect that data? That's a very good question. Um, when I started journey back in 2010, so I've spent like 14 years in this sector trying to solve the problem with data and AI. Agriculture is the least digitized sector, right? And, and for the right reasons, right? There was no telecom penetration in the rural India. Uh, smartphones were not there. 2G network was not hardly found. And uh, the first challenge we had was if you want to talk data intelligence, we have to create a SOP to collect the data, right? And uh, it, it was very difficult to even imagine a parallel that time because uh, you know uh, i don't have a sales force to look at and say i'll create a better sales force right because this whole data set is very very different this domain is very niche uh, so we we first defined the sop so we built something called cropping cloud which is an industry cloud for intelligent agriculture where organizations can define their workflows that you know how they are currently taking the decisions and every organization has a different workflow every crop and variety will create another workflow and if you change the geography and location it will have a different workflow right so you give the ability to build the workflow so that you can collect the you know structured data 
on your platform, right from you know geotag or a boundary of the farm, what crop, what variety, what was the outcome, what disease happened, and th these all becomes part of it, right? What input went into the farm, and then you also get the final output on it, right? So this is how. So we build this as a SaaS platform for people to manage the operations, which brought the data on the platform. Then we brought you know a lot of data from the climate side of it, uh, satellite images on top of it. We built crop knowledge graph because uh, you know. Uh, just to give you a context, if you're growing potato in India, the yield could be different and number of days to grow will be different. You go to Canada and US or Africa, these things will change. And when you change the variety, again, these, uh, the whole practices changes and the crop behavior changes when it changes the location or environment and, uh, and right? So you, you need tons of data across time span, not only one season, but you need multiple seasons to make the model understand what is the causal of if something is happening on that crop? And that knowledge graph, uh, you know, you have to refer while you are uh, building your machine learning uh, so that you can predict the yield in advance, right? So, so we, in last 10 years, we have collected around 0 0.5 billion uh, records of this 500 crop, 10,000 varieties from 103 countries, which is helping us to build this model much faster. Coming to the question, you know, so, so that's, the, that's the data side of it. Uh, Crop in sage is a uh, you know is a state of art uh, technology where we have combined all the models which we built in last ten years. Uh, so the AI models, crop models, we brought last forty years of climate data, current data, and the future climate data as well. And at the same time, we integrated that with Gemini, uh, and uh, uh, so that we, you know, when you are generating a data at the country scale, when you are predicting every 10 by 10 meter of the country for a crop, it's a trillions of data sets. Now I can ask a question on that, you know, show me the grids where yield has degraded by 10% and temperature has increased by one degree Celsius. It will take five or 10 people to do those kind of analysis. And every time I go and look at data, I have a different question to ask. So how do you simplify it for the government and enterprises to actually query the data. So that's where the you know, language model comes in. So you fine tune for uh, seasons and the crops and everything, and then integrate with your models. So, so we, can, we can decode the past, present, and future of the crop. Right? So if the target crop, and I, to give you an example, in Kenya, corn is a food security question. And the government wants to take a policy decision and build next five years of policy, but they don't have a data. So they said, can you use AI to generate what happened in the country on the corn in the last five years and do it on the grid so that I can take a policy decision like what should be my import policy or export policy? Uh, where should I give a subsidy on irrigation? Why the yields are degrading? Why the acreages, where the area which was doing a higher acreage in 2017 has decreased the acreages in uh, 2022. So what is gone wrong? And that's a massive data. You are talking about last seven years decoding that country from the corn perspective. So you you combine this data to give them a past uh, past uh, trend, and then how, what is happening right now, and what will happen in the future, so that you can take those policy decisions. So that's the example I would like to give. Yeah. Okay, uh, sir, to you. Uh, you know, I recently read that a Nelson uh, report had uh, shared that uh, AI usage improved, um, you know, user output by sixty six percent. Right, so what do you think will be the adoption of AI among businesses, particularly in the next three to four years? And is it a viable option for uh, you know, companies of any scale? Awesome, so um, this is a good question. I mean, at Manage Engine, we have seen AI move from marketing conversations to sales conversations. And customers want to know what our AI strategy is, how well will we align with their AI strategy? And Interestingly, especially after all the hype that came after the large language models, uh, customers have also started asking about return on investments. Okay, I'm paying $20 per person per month. How much am I getting back? And unfortunately, it's not that much. So how do we uh, look at this for enterprises? See, in the consumer world is very different because we have, we are used to the art of selling our personal data for free software. Right? We don't pay for our search, we don't pay for a social network, and our data is not our data. Right? Uh, I could be broke, my phone knows that I'm broke, but it still keeps pushing me to buy the latest iPhone. Right? So ideally it has to work for you. Enterprises and businesses cannot afford to do that. So what will they do? I mean, we will start looking at a lot of privacy-preserving machine learning techniques where 
their competitive secret, their sensitive business information will remain within their infrastructure and that will only be used to train their own models. Now, the next question is how do we make these models effective? 66% is a great number, but it is with problems at scale. Problems like solving your L1 customer support. Problems like where you have a frequently asked question and then you put a bot on top of it and people can converse with the bot and get the answers. But what is lacking is digital maturity in a lot of fields. He's talking about agriculture. Even in a completely digitized field like IT, we still see the lack of digital maturity. Uh, let me give you an example of digital maturity. Let's say you place a food delivery order on your favorite platform. Now that is digital maturity. You raise the request on the app, it goes to a restaurant, the restaurant accepts the order, a delivery person gets assigned, and they know your address, they come and give it to you. It's not an afterthought. I mean, uh, the delivery person does not put an entry into an app. It's not a data entry tool. It's a CRM with everything happening in real time. Now, this level of digital maturity, is it there in your recruitment? Is it there in your service delivery tool? You have, traditionally we have sold software to departments, right? Marketing department, there is a software company. Finance department, there is a software company. The time for unification has come to get the best out of AI tools. And Digital maturity is the right way to start off with that. So if you're a company that is looking forward to get ROI out of your AI investment, start with streamlining your processes. Once you streamline your processes, your data gets streamlined. And also invest in existing dumb automation. Overnight AI cannot come and change things. How much of dumb automation have you invested? Then AI will have a proactive value on it. Your first benchmark should be a 10% improvement in whatever metric you're tracking. 10% improvement in reduction of SLAs. 10% improvement in the total number of tickets that you've solved in a month. 10% uptime uh, increase in your uptime. Right? So that is a good way to measure. AI is impactful in certain areas, not impactful in certain areas. Find those that create impact in your domain, in your industry, for your levels of digitization with your business. Ensure your employee and customer experiences are aligned while you experiment with this technology. Uh, that will be a great way to start getting return on investments. And the next three, four years, we will see a lot of AI mature, uh, digitally mature organizations. Thank you, sir. You know, it's very rare when people, particularly from the space, talk about the shortcomings of AI. Because for, you know, like what you see in the media, in, you know, the public, it's all rosy. There are no issues, you know. So it's good that you have highlighted one of them. Uh, you know, sir, to sort of, sir, uh, you know, my question would be, um, Overall, if you see AI funding has reduced, you know, if you just talk about April, June quarter, it has reduced by 91% uh, subsequently and 82% year on year, right? So I just want to talk about how do you evaluate which AI startups you bet on and, uh, you know, what are the top three advice you give to them? See, two questions here. Uh, so if I understand it correctly, one is... Uh, as per your understanding, AI funding has decreased. That is one thing. Um, okay. And the second one is that what are the three advices for uh, AI founders? What are the criteria you look for and criteria. the three advices? Yeah. Okay. So cool. So see, uh, I have not seen the data. I don't know the source of the data. But uh, maybe there are uh, some micro level blips, which I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not challenging the data. That's the most stupid thing to do. <laughs> um, but I will say one thing. Um, when I meet my uh, counterparts in the industry, be it here in India or in US, one thing is very clear that this is the um, space where we are going to see where a lot of money will be made. Okay, that is for sure. Now, I'll not, I, as I said, I. I'm not aware about this. Uh, these numbers going down, but maybe uh, this is conjecture. Uh, maybe people are uh, trying to understand, uh, or they are trying to evaluate their other bets on this industry. A lot of bets were taken in this industry um, just because of the hype. Okay. Just because of the hype, people don't understand. So it's, it's, it was, and I'm not comparing, sorry if you think that I'm comparing, but I'm just giving you the other example to make a parallel, uh, parallel kind of uh, example. So in Web3, Web3, um, 
everyone was talking about Web3, uh, people will say, I will tokenize this, I will tokenize that, right? Last year we were on Web3. Yes, <laughs> so you were also there. So uh, Web3, this and that. And even at that point of time, I said, it's a great uh, marvel of engineering, computer science, mathematics, people who are into that industry, they understand. Okay, use cases will take some time before they mature. And now when it is gone, marketing teams, they will not talk about it, you will not see. And a lot of uh, good capital will be thrown on bad ideas, uh, as well as in bad implementation, where founders do not know um, how it can be implemented. I, my friend is sitting here who is building a great company here, correct? Um, um, in, in, in the field, which has a great impact as well as a business impact. So uh, coming back to your question, similarly, what is happening in AI also, a lot of uh, people are talking about AI without understanding the AI, what AI is, what artificial intelligence is. Uh, to some of us uh, who have been in, the, in this industry, uh, this is just a natural extension. Uh, now with LLMs coming into the market, people are coming to know about it. It is touching their life. Uh, for as he said, as he rightly said, uh, I, for my daughter, made a United State of whatever her name is. Uh, I, I created a country for her on AI, United States of her name. Okay, and we have done uh, multiple national anthems on different large language models for her and we sing. So my point is, that it is touching our life. Now, it's not in a backroom discussion where things will come, products are already there. and. Trust me, because I have good friends in all over the places, I can tell you in next couple of years, your life will be totally different. Uh, your WhatsApp, so you are doing with 50 people, everything will be summarized, because WhatsApp has some challenges. Uh, we'll not discuss that. But um, your all chats will be summarized, you can take an action, all of that is going to happen. So um, my take is in long run, if you are building artificial intelligence related company be it enterprise or customer facing, uh, you are in the right uh, area if you have understanding of that thing. So that is one thing where I'll park that conversation. Uh, this, uh, numbers may go down uh, this month, that month, that's okay, but long run investment will happen. So, and everyone is bullish on it. So that's be it uh, venture capitalist, be it startup founders or be it like enablers such as you. Uh, or enterprise, so that is uh, there. Now, what do we see? What do we see? Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, or fortunately, answer remains same that I gave for Web3 last year. I mean, if AI is uniquely solving that problem, which cannot be solved by any other tool, then it makes sense, correct? Um, if you are just, so AI is nothing. I mean, as my friend will understand, machine learning is nothing but, uh, um, a derivative of uh, uh, statistics, correct? High level statistics, that is what will give you data science. Similarly, artificial intelligence, a lot of work was happening. So if I am evaluating a company, I will see whether this use case makes sense. Uh, is there any advantage or, 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 or is there any moat around it or everyone will get access to this stuff and uh, create similar kind of products? Moat. Moat is also required in AI because if you are doing an application around it, I will also see what kind of technical capabilities you have uh, around it. If you are saying that uh, you will do, so I'll never, in, when, if you are saying that you will create a complete new um, research thing, then I will have to see whether you have a PhD in computer science or not, because without it, you cannot build. So I have to check your, those claims. So my thing is practicality, uh, whether you can build a business around it, uh, uh, whether there is a moat, whether you have understanding of technology uh, in that space, and also uh, the domain that you are going to working upon. Because AI requires a lot of domain understanding. This people don't understand. It is going, so right now, there are a lot of horizontal products that I'm seeing, but I'm sure uh, we will see very vertical focused products. And my friend from Zoho will agree to that. Yes, sir. You know, <clears throat> when I discussed with, uh, sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah, so when I discussed this with some of the investors and uh, when I also see what kind of, uh, you know, product makes sense, 
I think the LLMs, or, or this, this will become an infrastructure, right? There is a Mistral, there is a Llama, and people will have access to it. I think what will win is a niche data, the vertical data. The people who has got these vertical data sets, and nobody has access to that, and you can actually build on top of it and take a lead. Uh, you know, that's the massive thing, right? Uh, uh, and uh, that, uh, and, and verticalization will happen in next two, three years, four years. You'll see that the focus on the vertical will come, come back. And today, it's more like a horizontal. You are solving a key language uh, uh, Yeah, so you'll be solving a key uh, you know, language problem and then uh, solving some of the marketing problem or uh, law problem, right? But I think uh, the winner will be the guys who are sitting on this NIST data. Today, you don't have, you are crawling across the web to learn it, but whoever is sitting on that, building that moat will be uh, uh, will be very valuable tomorrow. Thank you so much, sir. With this, we'll be wrapping up the panel discussion. Uh, thank you, Nambraka, sir. Thank you, Krishna, sir. Thank you, Saurabh, sir.